Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee here. Weather in five, five days and five minutes as we start off the uh, day, Wednesday, the 6th of April, 2022. And we've got two standout features on the satellite this morning. Of course, we've got the system right along uh, the mid-Atlantic coast that uh, is uh, has brought the rain up the coast uh, this overnight and this morning. And that's getting kicked out to the east by a stronger storm up in the northern plains. And uh, you can see how that uh, signature there stands out uh, rather nicely uh, and very obvious right there. And there's a trailing cold front with that. And that front is moving eastward. That's going to have some severe weather implications uh, later today and tonight in uh, parts of the Gulf states and the southeastern part of the U.S. And then we're going to see that front reach the east coast uh, on Thursday with the chance of some showers and thunderstorms. And in the meantime, we've got this rain that's around uh, this morning. And you can see it here on the radar. There's uh, some patches of heavy rain and even a bit of a gusty wind at times along the coast uh, with that low offshore and a somewhat tight gradient, but nothing uh, to write home about, nothing crazy. That rain area is going to move out to the east. And I think we're going to see weather conditions improve from west to east as we move into and through the afternoon. The back edge of the rain should reach the coast probably around 1 o'clock or so and then continue to pull away uh, to the northeast. And in the meantime, you see the uh, system in the Plain States. The rotation is obvious on the radar and this big arc of showers that extends down into Kentucky and Tennessee, that's going to fire off severe weather today uh, in uh, Alabama and Georgia, eastern Tennessee, western North Carolina, western South Carolina. Uh, the Storm Prediction Center uh, actually uh, has uh, an enhanced risk of severe weather uh, indicated today for the region I just mentioned, and the slight risk <clears throat> runs up further to the north into southwestern Virginia and western North Carolina, and also back into uh, western Alabama and easternmost Mississippi down to the Florida Panhandle. There is tornado risk, and uh, there's a very large 5% area of tornado risk that extends up into eastern Tennessee and, and southern Kentucky, uh, down into G Georgia, and central and south Georgia on a 10% risk for tornadoes. That's a, that's a fairly high number, and I would not be at all surprised if we're going to wind up seeing uh, so some uh, tornado warnings being issued later today uh, and tonight when those thunderstorms form. Meanwhile, for tomorrow with the front along the East Coast, we've got a slight risk being indicated by the Storm Prediction Center in eastern North Carolina, southeastern Virginia, and also uh, throughout central Florida uh, showing a slight risk with a general thunderstorm risk running up into southern Maine. I've kind of been arguing the last few days that that marginal risk area might get pushed up a little bit further to the north when we get to Thursday. Uh, this looks all Always looks like one of those things where at the last minute the storm prediction center kind of nudges up uh, the uh, the risk zones and uh, as far as tornado risk is concerned uh, it's mainly confined to the two percent that you see there in uh, eastern North Carolina southeastern Virginia and down into northern and central Florida so again this is for uh, tomorrow and then uh, after that things are going to calm down a little bit uh, as we look at day three uh, there is no severe weather risk being indicated and on the long range uh, potential too low on day four. Day six and seven are showing risk areas again uh, in the southern plains and moving eastward. And this has been the signature uh, for this uh, entire uh, severe storm season, at least so far. So uh, as far as watches and warnings are concerned, really not too many. Most of them on the order of wind advisories because of that storm in the plains uh, and some winter weather advisories up in northern Minnesota with some winter storm warnings closer to Lake Superior. But other than that, it's really uh, fairly quiet across the United States. We really don't see much in the way of, say, flash flood warnings. or And also for the time of day, we're not seeing uh, any um, – severe thunderstorm watches or warnings up. So this is going to be mainly a, a deal for this afternoon. Actually, we do have flash flood watches up uh, for parts of central and southwest Georgia, just to point that out. But in the northeast and northern mid-Atlantic states, it is very quiet from that standpoint. This rain is coming in, going out, and we should be uh, done with it. And then weather conditions after that uh, should improve quite nicely. So uh, we're going to take a look at the latest run of the uh, the GFS, and I want to take a look at what's going on <clears throat> with respect to the long range, uh, because uh, there are going to be some subtle changes here. We continue to deal with, of course, this pattern we've been in for three weeks, 
where we keep getting these deep troughs dropping into the eastern part of the United States. And, of course, that is continuing here uh, as a, a big upper low. You can see it there forming over the Great Lakes today and tonight into Friday. That is going to swing eastward. So once we clear this cold front, the next two days are not going to be all that now, I'm not going to say that they're going to be terrible, but we are, we are going to deal with some uh, cold air aloft and instability issues and some scattered showers both Friday and Saturday. And maybe on Sunday, when this upper trough finally begins to pull out, we could see the atmosphere relax a little bit. And then after that, with a ridge building in the eastern part of the United States, as long as we don't get any kind of backdoor cold front, we should warm up nicely for the first half of next week. And we may have to wait until the end of next week for any kind of cold front to move on through. So that's what we're going to be really pretty much watching for uh, in terms of the overall pattern uh, for the uh, rest of this week and going into this weekend and next week uh, is the transition over into something a little warmer and uh, also the fact that we could wind up seeing uh, a backdoor cold front coming down and limiting uh, how warm it gets and how far north the warm air gets. So there's our storm for this morning. We'll move it on out. Temperatures are just going to stay uh, in the 40s while it's raining and then maybe bounce back up into the 50s uh, late today. Not going much of anywhere tonight. Here comes the cold front for tomorrow. I think we'll probably see some showers and thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon and evening as a low, little wave develops on that front. You see it there. Uh, that's why I'm thinking that maybe we'll see that marginal risk area get pushed up further north because we're getting that little low that redevelops on the front. And then Friday, uh, clouds and uh, some sun early, but clouds and some scattered showers around. Not everybody's going to see them. We'll also have the same situation for Saturday and into Sunday. Maybe again, Sunday temperatures, uh, the uh, conditions will relax from the shower standpoint. Temperatures will probably be into the 60s on Friday and, on, uh, and for tomorrow, mid 50s to low 60s for Thursday, into the 60s on Friday. Uh, probably 50s for Saturday and Sunday. And then next week, with that high off the East Coast and a mostly southwest flow, we should warm up nicely. I think we could see uh, uh, temperatures start to edge up a bit on Monday and then reach up into the 70s on Tuesday, maybe even approach uh, 80 uh, in places uh, south and west of New York City. And here we are with the idea of maybe there's a little bit of a backdoor front that runs across uh, New York, Northern Pennsylvania and New York City for the middle part of next week. But uh, from the standpoint of rain, it looks to be minimal until the end of next week when we've got a cold front that'll be coming through on the Friday going into Easter weekend. So that's it for Weather in 5 for today. The uh, Joe and Joe Weather Show tonight at the 7.30 Eastern Time. So we hope to see you then. And by the way, I'm going to leave you with this. This is uh, it was issued for, by the National Hurricane Center. And if there's ever any doubt in your mind that forecasts are getting better, uh, this should uh, kind of put that doubt aside for you. Uh, but uh, over the last uh, 14 years, uh, we're looking at the margin of error in miles uh, at the various forecast times. And what's uh, really... Uh, an interesting and actually a, a nice accomplishment here. Uh, the margin of error has, uh, in terms of the uh, uh, of the miles from where a storm is forecast to be and where it actually is, has shrunk by about over 40%. Uh, going out to five days, for example, the error was uh, 305 miles back in 2008. It is now down to 200 miles. That is a significant improvement. And every time frame has improved on the st on the order of about 40% or so, uh, with uh, the five-day forecast at 34.4%, and everybody else in the uh, mostly in the low 40s range. So I just thought I'd leave you with this uh, as a um, indicator that uh, the weather models that forecasters are using and coming up with are um, reducing uh, the error in uh, the in the forecast by a significant amount and Little by little, progress is being made. All right. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you later.